Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be round two. A little blurry. But I have a bunch of parts for the 64 Impala and the 59. I'm gonna be painting all this stuff satin black. I'm going to put on a epoxy primer first. And then we're gonna put a couple coats, probably two coats of a satin black and that's it. So I'll be back here in a little bit. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and put the epoxy primer on, then I'll come back and show you guys the satin black. Okay, the epoxy primer is, in, is on, and I'm letting it dry, and then uh, we'll put on two coats of the satin, uh, single stage, Summit Racing satin black. Um, now, if this 64 Impala was like a show car, or a real, real nice paint job, I would have 2K primer these, sanded them and then probably maybe a second time as well because there will be a little bit of pitting and stuff but nothing bad and basically from here over gets hidden anyways uh, by the fender so now i'm going to mix up some uh single stage satin black um there's no label on the can because it fell off um but i've had really good success with this summit single stage paint um, especially their satin blacks. Uh, it's a four to one mix with a little reducer. 10 to 15% reducer is what I normally run. Um, I should have enough here. I think I got a little bit over, a, uh, just under a half gallon probably. And I'm only putting two coats on, I'm not going super heavy or anything like that. And uh, then I'm going to, I'm gonna bake this dry because I have some uh, gloss black single stage parts I need to paint for a bench. They're old uh, cast iron bench legs in a back. I need to paint that for my neighbor who is doing all my electrical in the basement for me. So I've been fixing a few things for him here and there, just in exchange for him to rewire my fuse panel and stuff. I usually do all my own electricity. Um, he's retired from the electric company, so it's kind of nice to not have to worry about that. He can just do the fuse panel. I'll do what I know I do, which is painting. He can do that, which he did his whole life. And it works out well for both of us. So this is a little thick. I'm gonna have to probably add a little bit extra reducer to it. A little on the thick side, but I'm pretty positive that this is the satin black. I'm almost second guessing myself now because that looks shiny on the can. But I'm pretty positive this is satin, but I could be wrong now when I'm looking at it. Let me look and double check. I'm pretty sure that this is a satin black. The other can in there is definitely gloss black. Um, well, worst case scenario, if I paint this and the first coat doesn't want to start getting dull, because after about 10 minutes it starts dulling up. If it stays shiny, worst case scenario, I'll put a satin clear over top of it and that will dull it down. Uh, I'm trying to use up a bunch of paint that I have before I order more. I usually always have like a gallon or two of this around and stuff like that, but it's getting to the end of the year and I wanna use up everything I have before I buy new, uh, just to get the old inventory gone and then I'll you know restock it just because this stuff lasts for a long, long time, but it's always nice to get fresh stuff in. Plus I try not to mix one job to the next material wise with like satin blacks and stuff because there could be a sheen difference from one can to the other I've noticed. So I think it's always best to um, pour from a new can, your whole job from the same can if you can. Um, I'm gonna use a medium hardener rather than a slow because I'm not concerned with this dulling up or anything on me because it's gonna be dull in the end, end anyway. So I'd rather it dry quicker so that I can unhang these parts and move on to those last parts for the night because I have the 64 Impala sitting outside. It is not currently raining today is supposed to we have a slight chance of rain tomorrow so i want to get these parts in here painted i'm going to bake them at probably 130 to 140 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes and then i'm, I'm going to let them sit for about two hours 
and just let the booth slowly cool back down and then I'll be able to take them out of there and um, hang up those three other parts that I need to paint gloss black. So it's just pretty much a whole day of painting parts, waiting for stuff to set up so I can move them out. Um, I'm working in my basement between painting, so it's, it's actually working out pretty well today. Um, gonna get a lot knocked out that I need to get done um, after these satin black parts are painted for the 64 Impala. That's all I have left is the underside of the hood, the underside of the trunk lid, and the wheel skirts, and then the lower front balance. And then everything for the 64 will be painted and it'll be able to go together. Like I said, I have all the side moldings in my van. I have not opened them up yet, but they're all supposed to be in there. So I should have all the moldings for the car. I'm not sure about door handles and stuff yet. I need to go through it and see exactly what he bought. Uh, I basically met him yesterday, grabbed the parts, threw them in my van, and I have not opened them up yet. So, all right, I'm gonna get this uh, loaded into the gun and we are gonna go put our first coat of, hopefully, uh, satin black on. But we won't know for a little bit here. Either way, it's gonna be satin black when I'm done with it. Because I'm pretty positive I have sat clear. Yep, got about a quart of it left. So I do have satin clear if we have to go over it.
coat of black, and then we're going to put a coat of uh, satin clear over top. And that'll fall off. You're probably wondering, can you put clear over single stage paint? And yes, you can. This is a urethane single stage, and it's a urethane clear. You can put them over top of each other. There is no risk in doing that. Um, I do it a lot of times when I paint kitchen cabinets. Um, I'll put on a single stage color, and then I'll put a uh, satin clear over top just to give it extra protection. Um, so it is not an issue at all. So looks like we're gonna be putting one more coat of gloss black on, and then uh, uh, coat of clear. Whatever, it slows the process down a little bit, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some more black mixed up. I'm gonna thin it a little bit more this time. It was a little thick on that first uh, spray. Um, it was, the droplets were a little on the big side. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some more with a little bit extra reducer and we'll get one more light coat put on these parts.
Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for about 15, 20 minutes. And we're gonna put one coat of satin clear over top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff cleaned up. I'll come back and we'll get it mixed up and uh, put our coat on. Okay, let's mix up some clear. This is a Summit Racing Hot Rod Satin Clear. They sell this in matte finish, satin finish, and I think flat finish, and then obviously your gloss finish. The reason why I use a lot of this Summit Racing single stage satin blacks and clears and stuff is when I paint arcade cabinets, it's always like a satin finish, and this is the best value for your money. Um, plus, it works really good on these parts that are also satin black that don't need to have top dollar paint put on them because there's no reason to. Um, so now this is a four to one mix, exactly like the um, single stage paint and their other clear. And all their products use the same hardeners and the same reducers, the Summit brand stuff. So it makes it real easy to be able to go from one thing to the other and you always have the right, I didn't mix this. I've got to let that stir for a couple minutes and then I'll come back. If you don't mix that stuff properly and stir it really well, um, all your flattener will be at the bottom of the can and you'll pour off the top and it'll be glossier than it needs to be, than it should be. So you got to make sure you stir that stuff really well. If I were to take that lid off of there and put a paint stick in the bottom, I would come up with clumps of flattener that is at the bottom of the uh, can. All right, let's get ready to mix this now. I have the spray booth temperature at 80, 81 degrees right now. I'm trying to get this stuff to dry pretty quickly. And if you guys are wondering, uh, new people that haven't been watching, uh, why I never strain my paint. Um, you always see me pour right into here. That's because these lids have a strainer built into them. So you don't have to waste a paper strainer because the lid does it for you. So if anybody's new to the channel and haven't seen me and wondering why the heck is this guy not straining anything, that is why. Because it doesn't need it. And I just have enough hardener left in there for that. And then we're gonna throw some reducer in it. The reason why I wanna reduce it just to thin it down a little bit, make it flow a little bit more. Ten percent. I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up. I'm gonna use my clear gun with a one-three tip, rather than my base gun, which is a one-four, and uh, that'll uh, help break up the clear a little bit more, and it'll make this uh, cup of clear be able to get all those pieces with one coat. And that's all I plan on putting on is one coat. There is no reason to put on two coats um, other than if I don't like how it's dulling up. That's all that this purpose is, is we're dulling that gloss paint down to a satin finish. If I would have had the correct paint, we would have not had to put the clear on. So um, I guess you can look at this as a little bit added extra protection because we're now putting a third coat on. And uh, I guess you're rubbing satin clear rather than uh, satin black paint. So, all right, I'm gonna get this stirred up for another minute or two, and we're gonna get it in the gun. We're gonna go put a coat on, and then we're gonna start drying it and see what it looks like um, as it dolls up, as it starts drying. Okay, let's head out there. Now, this doesn't need to have a real heavy, thick coat put on it. Just a nice, even coat is all it needs. It's okay if it looks a little orange peely because that's going to go away as soon as it dries.
the heater and uh, we'll take a look at it after it's been heated up for a little while because that's going to really start showing how it dries. Now, Summit Racing Paint, this brand here, they don't recommend a bake cycle. They don't even have instructions on baking it. But if you use it with their shiny clear, with their regular clear coat, you will have a problem. I've done it. It dulls up really bad, and it almost looks like it gets solvent pop in it. Um, I've baked it single stage with satin clear over it and had no issues because if it shows any of that stuff, it doesn't matter because it's a satin finish. So me baking this is not going to hurt it because it's going to be satin in the end anyway. So we did real good on product there. Only a couple ounces left. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and then I'm going to turn the exhaust fans off and start running the heater only so we can start heating it up in there. It's like 82 degrees in there. I noticed that the heat's starting to creep up, which means my exhaust filter is starting to get clogged with paint. So either A, I could blow it out, which I'll probably do. I usually will take it out of the screen. There's metal mesh on each side that hold that filter in place. I'll take the outer metal mesh out, I'll carefully roll it up, I'll take it outside and I'll blow off all the dust and I can use it again. Um, and then after that, I usually will throw it away and then put a new filter in. But I noticed that when the heat starts creeping up in there and it starts getting warmer and warmer, that means that I'm getting less air leaving the spray booth. Also, you can tell if uh, more overspray starts getting in the air and it's taking longer to exhaust. That's another reason to clean your filters or change them. So, all right, I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up and I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, let's go take a look at the parts. It's been about 15 minutes or so. The heater has been running. It is uh, 130 in here, so it's pretty hot. But uh, you can see how it's drying a nice uh, satin finish. What was that before? That looks pretty darn good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heater off. And... Uh, let these dry for a couple hours now, let them cool off, and uh, we should be uh, good with those parts so that I can uh, unhang them and then hang those parts for the bench that I have to paint still today. And then I will be done painting for the day, so pretty much almost the whole day of painting, waiting, painting, and waiting. Um, if any of you guys are doing like paint work for a full-time job, like people that work at NACO and stuff that are painting like five, six, seven, eight cars a day. I don't know how they're doing it because, well, I work construction, so my arms and everything are beat after working all day. Plus I've been doing it for 32 years, so my body's falling apart. But um, I don't, I give it to these guys because my arms, shoulders start hurting after painting for a couple hours a day, let alone a full day of painting. Um, luckily I've uh, managed to learn how to spray with my left arm as well because I'm right-handed, so you always want to use your right hand if you're right-handed. Same thing if you're left-handed, you're always going to use your left hand. But uh, over the years, I've learned to spray with both hands because after so long, my arm will start cramping up and I need to take a break for a minute so I can keep painting by using my left hand. So that's something good to teach yourself, you know, is how to use the spray gun with both hands in case you do start cramping up or, you know, just getting tired and stuff like that. So, all right, we're going to end this video. I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to take them down and I'm going to get that bench painted. I don't think I'll make a video on it. It's just a cast iron bench. It's two legs or two sides and then a back piece. It's not really a big deal. And then I uh, later on tonight, I'll probably pull that car back in here, the 64 in power. Um, I don't know. I got to go out of town for a couple days, so I don't know if I'll have any more videos after this one until next weekend. Um, but we'll see what happens. You never know. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please like, share, subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.